Henry Ford was born on July 30, 1863, near Dearborn, which would be the site of the Ford Motor Company's headquarters. As a young child, he already showed characteristics of a successful engineer and businessman. Some of those characteristics included being inquisitive, outgoing, and his desire to learn with hands-on experience. His desire to learn was very prominent in his early life. For example, on his 13th birthday, his dad gave him a pocket watch and he continuously dismantled and reassembled the watch. At the age of 16, he left home and went to Detroit, Michigan to become an apprentice in a Michigan car company where he would become even more familiar with steam engines. Not the cars that you're thinking of though, they were railroad cars. In 1906, at the age of 40, he established the Ford Motor Company in the Bourne, Michigan. Two years later, in October of 1908, he introduced the Model T to America. It took another six years till he invented the assembly line in 1914. The narrator in this short clip describes the steps that Henry Ford took in order to design the assembly line. In those days, each car was built from the frame up on stationary wooden horses. There was a different crew for each car, and the same crew stayed on a car until it was finished. That meant duplication of effort and a lot of time wasted. So they tried moving the men from car to car. Each man had a special job to do, and as soon as he finished it, he moved on to the next car and did the same thing there. That was better, but it still took 12 and a half hours to assemble each Model T. Henry Ford watched it for a while, then he had an inspiration. Instead of moving the men past the cars, why not move the cars past the men? So on one hot August morning, they tried it that way. A husky young fellow put a rope over his shoulder, and Henry Ford called, let's go. And at that very moment, as the workmen began to fasten the parts onto the slowly moving car, the assembly line was born, a technique that was to revolutionize mass production all over the world. the idea would work, they began to improve it, refine it. They rolled a chassis down a single line of track, pushing it from crew to crew. And the more expert they became at this new method, the faster the cars came off the assembly line, and the price of the Model T began to drop. This political cartoon shows what would happen if Henry Ford was made president. Henry Ford was pretty much known for his assembly line work, so the people thought that if he were president that he would use an assembly line to run the government. As you can see in the middle of the screen, there's all the night shift protesters that want $5 minimum per day, while the day shift people are walking out into the treasury where the US Mint is just giving them the money top of the screen you see that the bills are being passed from one end of the Capitol House to the other. And while all this is happening, you see that Henry Ford is driving it all. Anti-Semitism in America saw bitterness when increased immigration from Europe brought millions of Jews to the U.S. during Ford's childhood in the later half of the 19th century. Henry Ford agreed with Hitler's idea. Hitler once said, I shall do my best to put his theories into practice in Germany. I regard Henry Ford as my inspiration. In an effort to stop World War I in 1915, Ford headed a privately sponsored peace expedition to Europe that failed miserably. But once the US joined the war, Ford was a leading producer in ambulances, tanks, airplanes, and submarine chasers. In 1918, he ran unsuccessfully for the US Senate on the Democratic ticket.
1927, Henry Ford was sent to trial, but the judge, after the auto merchant ironically suffered an automobile accident, called it off due to a mistrial. But even though the judge called it off, Ford openly apologized for his anti-Semitic actions from that moment forward. His anti-Semitic ways were over. Strongly opposed to trade unionism, Ford stubbornly resisted union organization in his factories until 1941, that same year he retired. Known for his revolutionary vision, Henry Ford manufactured inexpensive automobiles with skilled workers given a steady wage. Henry Ford didn't invent the horseless carriage, but he brought it to the masses.